Well, good morning, Audacious Church. Morning online, everyone who is tuning in from home. We assume that you are looking brilliant. All I can say is this group of people here are looking brilliant. 10.30 service dubbed the best looking service. Is it? It is, yes it is, the best looking service. Well, let's give the band a massive round of applause. Thank you so much for leading us so well in worship. And we're gonna dive straight into the Word of God. Are you ready for the Word of God, Audacious? Yes. I promise if you interact with me, I will preach quicker and better. I know. At any point you can stand up and say, good point. Thank you. Thank you. At any point you can just stand up and say anything like, no, no complaints. Don't wanna hear it, okay? Pastor Paul will be on the door at the end. <laughs> well, we are in our fourth week of the series all together when we are taking a dive into the early church in Acts, uh, where the church was born, birthed from, uh, on the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came and empowered us to be the church. And since then, we have been being the church. And uh, we're gonna continue that with week four uh, and also next week as well, we're gonna continue this series. If you've missed it, I want you to encourage you to jump on anything that you jump on, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you listen and catch up, we want you to hear all of it. Well, this week I was listening, actually it was last week, I was listening to my 11-year-old daughter teaching my six-year-old daughter. Uh, what kids teach each other is not what you, you never, you want them to teach them like hand-on reading skills and things like that. No, no, they don't hand that on. She was teaching my daughter ifs and thens. Let me explain what I mean. You know what I mean. When I explain it, you'll be like, oh yeah. The if you, then you rules that are in the house. I'll give you an example. Maybe you had one of these. If you eat all your dinner, then you can have your pudding or dessert, ice cream. My daughter was teaching, uh, my 11 year old was teaching my six year old. The if you, she was teaching her though, was if we behave and don't argue, then mom will forget we're up when we get a late night. You know, it's that kids go very quiet very quiet at bedtime because they want to lull you into a sense that they're not up. You just have a good time with daddy. If yous and then yous. Basically, uh, what she is teaching her, which she should as a sister, she's like the cause and effect academy. It's like, Olivia, if you do this, this is what will happen. If you do that, this is what will happen. Physics calls it cause and effect that when one event happens, another event happens as a result of that event, cause and effect. Sometimes in my cooking, I have to reverse engineer cause and effect. If you've been at my house, I will get out the recipe. I will not follow it. I will be one of those people that just throws a bit of this in, throws a bit of that in, throws a bit of this in. And then the effect, when I taste it and it tastes brilliant, I think, mmm, this is really good. That's the effect. Then I have to think, what was the cause? How did I actually get here so I can make it again? As we're reading through the Bible and we're looking at the Acts Church and we're thinking, this is amazing. It's like we're looking at the effects and we're saying, what an incredible church of God it was. And we're gonna read about it in a moment. I think we should read it through the eyes of cause and effect. Because we want the effects, we want the then, but we're saying, what was the effect? How did they get to that? The Bible talks about it in biblical terms, it's called sowing and reaping. If this is what they were reaping, what were they sowing? So I thought what we could do is read a passage from Acts Church and uh, let's have a look at it through the eyes of cause and effect through the eyes of sowing and reaping, because we all want the effect, so let's figure out the cause. Acts 2 verse 42, it says this, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. 
They had a deep sense of awe came over them and the apostles performed many miracles, signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything that they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy. We've just been singing about that and generosity all while praising God and enjoying the good will will of all people, not just their community, all people, the favour of everybody. And each day, listen to this, the Lord added to the fellowship those who were being saved. What an insane church. I mean, what a church to listen to. They saw an outpouring and I made a little list of what they saw an outpouring of, a deep sense of awe, an outpouring of miracles, signs, wonders, great joy, generosity, goodwill, favour and daily salvations. That's the effect. And I'm thinking that's what we want. I want miracle signs and wonders in my life. I need miracles in my family. I want people to get saved in my workplace. Well, my workplace, I work for church. Do you know what? Mm. I want to see salvation in schools and in university campuses. I want to see joy in a society that is full of doom and gloom and bad news. I want to see joy, supernatural joy. This is the church that we want. And I believe that's not just for Acts Church. I don't want to read the Bible and say they were the good old days. No, I want this to be the church that we live in. This is the life that I want. I'm reading it and I'm thinking, "Mm, this is pretty good. So what was the cause? If that's what they were reaping, what were they sowing? So I read back through it and I think you can see it as well if we put it back up on screen. We can pick a few things out in a moment. It says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, my sort of people, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. Skip down a bit and it says, all the believers met together in one place and shared everything that they had. They shared their money. Then it went, skip down a bit more. It said, they worshiped together at the temple each day and met in homes for the Lord's Supper and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. I'm thinking of the effect is that list. There's a a second list that I made. We can put that on screen. This is what they devoted themselves to. Well, reading that, I think we could sum up what they devoted themselves to as they devoted themselves to spiritual community. Audacious, I wanna tell you today that the church that we desire, that the outpouring of the things of the Spirit that we desire to have in our lives is linked to our devotion to spiritual community. It says in Matthew 18, it says this, verse 20, for where two or three gather in my name, God speaking, uh, Jesus speaking there, I am with them. That's an if and a then. If you gather in my name, then I will be there. He will be there. Let me remind you who He is. He's the all-powerful one. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Prince of Peace Himself. He's the one who performs miracles. He's the one who is all-powerful. He's the one who defeated sickness. He's the one who defeated death. And it says, where you gather, if you commit to gathering, I will be there. I think the Acts Church, which they're teaching us today and we're gonna unpack in the next few moments together is our devotion to spiritual community draws the attention of God. Our devotion to true community together releases the supernatural. The cause, the cause to what we wanna see is our devotion to spiritual community. I think, gosh, I feel like that's quite simple. It feels like pretty good deal. Like the core 
was is, is me devoting myself to turning up. Well, I know what I bring. God's saying, to, hi James. That's distracted me, he's been away for a long time. Just turning up, my devotion to turning up into the, in the community and then God says, he'll turn up. That seems quite simple on our behalf, our part to play. It seems a pretty good deal to me. Because what I have learned is that God, he does not abide by the laws of physics. Praise God. The kingdom of heaven's equations aren't governed by the kingdom of earth's maths. When we sow our a little, we sow and we give our a little, thank God that he gives his a lot. When we, when we commit to the cause, he multiplies the effect. He takes our natural and he turns it into the supernatural. The simple but powerful truth that I want to look at today from the Acts Church is that our devotion to spiritual community draws the attention of God. Today's message is called Temple and Tables. Temple and tables. You see the temple, see the template that the spirit that the early church had of spiritual community, of committing to spiritual community with those two things. The temple, welcome to the temple, and to tables. Small community. And actually, this template, the Acts Church got this template from Jesus himself. If you look through the Gospels, Jesus was consistently found in two places. He was consistently found in the temple and he was consistently found round tables with smaller groups. I love it, the first time that we hear about him being in the temple uh, is in Luke 2. And this is a great chapter to read, uh, a great few verses to read um, when you're feeling a bit like a bad parent. Because this is the, these are the verses where Mary and Joseph lose Jesus. Yep, for three days. Like not for an hour, not for 10 minutes in H&M. <laughs> They're like traveling to a different place and they have left Jesus 12 years old. So they travel back and they're doing what parents do. You know that absolute sheer panic when you find your child and you're like, if you've got a child, you're like, when you see them, it's a mixture between pure anger that they ran away and absolute joy that they're alive and they're here with you. And I mean, Mary, you can imagine, Joseph would have had to go into the temple and he's gone to the temple and there's Jesus in, his te in the temple, listening and learning at 12 years old. And he, he says, where did you think I was gonna be mother? In my, law, in my father's house, that would, that would have annoyed her. I just tell you now as a mother, that would have annoyed her. But then later on that we read again in Luke, we hear over and over again, Luke 19, it says that he's an adult now, a man now, and it says every day he was teaching in the temple. But then I also love if you go through Mark and John, in Mark you find him around a table with tax collectors, dining with people. In John, we see him at Lazarus' table, the man who died and he had raised from the dead. He sat around tables. The template of temples and tables is not just set by Acts Church, but it's set by Jesus. This is where we devote ourselves to spiritual community. But we can see it's central to that. In Hebrews, Paul, he actually warns us he says this in Hebrews 10 verse 25, it says, from 24 I'll read it, it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love, uh, love and good deeds. And it says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing so, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Do you know what? One of the reasons we give up meeting together in the temples, in the temple, the church, and around tables in small groups is because we forget, or maybe you never realize, but we forget the supernatural, the, we forget, sorry, that our natural cause has a supernatural effect. 
what we can do in the temple and in small groups is we can just think of it in the natural. We forget what God brings to it. We relegate what is supernatural to just natural. We relegate it to just turning up in the same place. But Paul warns us, he says, do not see it through natural eyes. Do not give up meeting together. In fact, if you just look at church through natural eyes, it's pretty weird. Just for a minute, think about it. In the next service, we're baptizing people in water. It's pretty weird if you see it through the natural eyes. And maybe you're here for the first time today and you're thinking, I agree. This is pretty weird. But Paul says, do not see it, do not forget that this is not just natural. This is supernatural. We have to remember the why we gather in temples and tables and we have to remember what God brings through it. We're gonna take a moment and I will literally be preaching kind of to the choir really because for a moment I want us to remember why we meet in the temple. This is the temple. Turn to the person next to you and say, welcome to the temple. Billy Graham, he says this about the church. He says, the church is a storehouse of, super, of spiritual food whereby the inner man is fed, nourished, developed, and maturity. We gather in the temple for a number of reasons. There is countless supernatural reasons that I want to point out to you, but I can't, I can only do a few because we've only got a few minutes together. But I wanna remind you why we gather. There's three things I wanna point out to you. We gather for corporate worship. If you have your natural eyes on, corporate worship is karaoke. It just misses kind of like the ball bouncing across the top of the thing. That's what it looks like in the natural. But in the supernatural, Psalm 18, it says this, verse one to two, it says, you have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises up with the chorus of the infants. This kind of praise has the power to shut Satan's mouth. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose you. I wanna remind you, church, today, when we come together in corporate worship, Jericho praise brought walls down. I wanna remind you that praise is a precursor to a breakthrough. I wanna remind you that praise shifts the atmosphere that God Himself, when we gather, His attention is drawn, but when we start to praise, He sits down and anything can happen in His presence. Corporate worship is powerful because sometimes, let's face it, we don't want to worship. You come in and you're thinking, I'm, you don't, I'm going through a lot. And the band starts, loud drums, Love you guys. And you're there and thinking, I don't wanna lift my hands. And then people start to sing and they start to praise and the Word of God is coming out and they start to sing and they start to praise and we sing ourselves into His presence. Maybe you can't sing, but everyone can praise, everyone can worship and then we lift up our eyes. And we know worship's not for us, but in a corporate setting, it does something where you lift up your eyes and you remember He is bigger. He is worthy. He is the beginning and the end. The reason we come together is for corporate worship. You can worship in your car, but there is nothing like worshiping in the house of God. I wanna remind you that we come for corporate worship, but we also come for the preaching of the Word. This, the preaching of the word where somebody takes, not a book, the book, and we study it and we go through it and we pray and we say, Lord, what do you wanna say to your people? And then we preach it. Romans 1 verse 16, it says this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. When we preach the word of God in the temple, salvation comes. Eternities are changed forever. When we preach the Word of God, it anchors us. 
It changes us, it molds us, it transforms us, it heals us, it frees us. Ephesians 6 talks about the word being like a sword. Hebrews 4 goes on to say it's living and active. You can consume and listen to any content, but the preaching of the Word of God is the thing that will go into you and it will work in you. It will work on you. It will work through you. We preach the Word of God in the temple for change, the supernatural exchange. Faith rises. It says faith comes through hearing and hearing the Word. We gather so our faith, we gather around the Word because we wanna gather around faith, not our feelings. We come into the temple with our feelings and we say, I'm feeling this. But as I hear the preaching of the Word, my faith rises. The reason you should come week in, week out to the temple to devote yourself is because in 1 Timothy, it talks about a pattern of sound teaching coming to hear week in, week out, what is God, not the preacher, although we are preachers, but not the preacher, what has God got to say to His people? I have ears to hear what you are saying, God. It unpacks theology, it clarifies confusion, preaching of the Word. We come because of corporate worship. We come because of the preaching of the Word. We come, we need to remember, we come to give. This is one of those weird equations that when you give to God, you should have less. When you give away, in the natural, you should have less. But this is one of those equations. It's not kingdom of earth maths. It doesn't work like that. He does not come under physics. And we come into the temple, we honor God with our tithe, our talent, and our time in our giving. Pastor Paul Reed next week is spending the whole week, the whole week, <laughs> be here all week, the whole message is focused around this. So I'm not gonna dive into this, but I do wanna focus on one part of the giving, that in your giving of your talent, you find purpose. 1 Corinthians 12 says we are the body of Christ. When people walk in, their talent, their gift that they give by themselves, they could just be a hand. But when they give their talent, when they give their gift, you gain purpose. When we give out, we should feel like we have less. But when you give to the temple, you gain more because you find your purpose in the context of the temple. There's so many other reasons uh, that we could unpack about starting the week together. We go to the temple to start a week together, to bring into alignment, if you were here last week, to agree with people at the start of the week, to break isolation, to anchor ourselves in the good news, not just the news, to raise the next generation. There's so many reasons we come together. Many people gather in this city, in arenas, sports events, concerts. But Matthew 18 says, for, when the, you, uh, for those who gather, two or three gather in my name, there I will be. The temple is different to any other community because it doesn't matter where we meet. It matters that we gather and who is there. The supernatural power of God. We remember this. Our devotion to spiritual community in the temple, it draws the attention of God. When you get up in the morning, you drive into church, it feels very natural. When you park and you say hello to somebody, you come and get in the kids' queue and you get a coffee, it feels very natural. This is not natural. This is super natural. And our devotion to the temple draws God's attention and releases the supernatural power into our lives. Ben, you can come and join me. I know it's a little bit early, but go with me for a minute. The second place where the spiritual, spiritual community is formed that I talked about is the table. The table, the temple and the tables. 
It says in Acts 2 that I just read to you, just to remind you, it says they worshiped together at the temple each day and they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. It then says this, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper. That word fellowship there, in the Greek, is koinona. I hope I got that right. Koinona. It's the first appearance of this word in the New Testament. And it means to partner, to have communion in, to share. It's a deep partnership, a deep relationship, a deep connection. And koinona can only happen over time and over tables. I mean, it doesn't have to happen over a table. It could happen over a kitchen bench. Where are the best places you have conversations with a small group of people? Sat on your kitchen floor late at night. It could be on a couch in your front room. It's just temples and tables sounded better, so we went with tables. But that sort of deep relationship, deep community, can only happen over time and over tables. I've been part of many small groups. I have many small groups of friendships and teams and people I've devoted my life to and we sit and eat because I'm a feeder. We sit and we eat and we talk and we laugh, we belly laugh, we laugh until we cry and we share and we cry. That deep rooted, intimate commitment to one another where we say, I will share my life with you. You know, one of the greatest hindrance that I have found in growing in faith and in discipleship of Christ Jesus is an unwillingness to devote ourselves to Jesus-centered community not just in the temple, but at the table. Because it takes time and it takes vulnerability. Two things that we feel in the natural, not got enough of, don't wanna do that. What fights against vulnerability is that phrase at the minute of what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? What strengths do you have in the workplace? What do you bring to the table? Present your strengths. But church, I wanna tell you, you need to find a table where you can bring everything to it. You can bring your gifts, you can bring your talents, but you can bring your weaknesses. You can bring your disappointments. You need to find a table with people that you can sit with on the mountaintop and say, everything's great. And in the valley where you're saying, I cannot do this. What do you find at the table? In spiritual community, what should you find at the table? Pastoral care, discipleship, in the context of relationship, accountability, friendship, prayer, support, your needs being met walking with others, encouragement. It's like this supernatural exchange. And it takes time. I know a lot of us, we can say, I'm too busy. We're all busy. I felt like I was busy when I was unemployed and didn't have any children. We're all busy. You just have to choose what you're busy doing. Design what you're busy doing. Church, be very careful what tables you devote yourself to. Be careful who you sit with and who you talk with, who you share your life with. Last week, Pastor Glenn spoke an incredible message about agreement and who we agree with. And you can look back at that, but show me your table and I will show you your future. But Hannah, where do I find one of those tables? Well, 
In Audacious Church, we literally call them small groups. The small group leaders are wearing lanyards today and they're saying, I'll help you find a table. I'll find you, I'll find your table. Maybe you're here and you know you've got to excuse yourself from some of the tables you're sat at because you don't bring, they're not helpful. You don't bring everything to it. They don't strengthen you. It's not a spiritual community. And you're saying today, I can I find a table? Let us help you find a table. A devotion to spiritual community at the table draws the attention of God. I want us to make a decision today, church, to not just be committed, to not just be devoted to the temple. And maybe some of you are here and you're saying, "Mm, I'm kind of devoted to the temple. One week here, one week not. But a devotion to the temple draws the attention of God. Maybe you're here and you're saying, yeah, do you know what? I'm not devoted to the table and I need to find that table. I want us to make that commitment. Just as I'm landing, I'm about to pray for us. Our devotion to spiritual community draws the attention of God because it's obedience to His command. You know, Jesus, He actually commanded us to be devoted to one another when He summed up the 10 Commandments, which was how we should have used to interact. 10 Commandments, they were the guidelines of community, but He summed them up in this way. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest command. And He said, and the second is love your neighbour as you love yourself. Do you know what devotion is? Devotion is love. And God knew when we hear about what devotion is and we're thinking, oh, it's pretty easy. Actually, we're now thinking, gosh, devoting to this. God knew that we would need help to being devoted to one another. That's why on the day of Pentecost, we were given the Holy Spirit. We were given the Holy Spirit to be the church, to be the empower, to be empowered to be the church, to be empowered to be devoted to spiritual community. One of the roles of the Holy Spirit, it says this in Romans 5 is this, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that we have been given. 1 John 4 says this, we love, We can love because He first loved us. The church kind of want to flip it round. I want to say actually our devotion to spiritual community is in fact the effect of His love. Today you don't have to muster up devotion for the person next to you. Muster up the devotion to be vulnerable in a small group. What you actually need to do is we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive His love. His love that is the empowerment to be devoted. You see, what happened is this, is God first loved us. I have a diagram that's gonna come up on screen. And this cause and effect, there's actually something called a cause and effect cycle where it doesn't stop. His love, He first loved us. And when the Holy Spirit came, He poured His love into us because He was like, you're gonna need it. You're gonna need the empowerment of my love to devote to being the church, to spiritual community. So His love and His love, what it did is it drew our devotion. He poured it into us and we started to devote to being in spiritual community, to loving one another, to gathering and being a community. And then what we just read is as we gather, we draw His attention and He pours out His Holy Spirit. And His Holy Spirit pours out His love. And His love causes us to devote. And our devotion draws out the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit pours out His love. And His love causes us to, to devote to community. This is the momentum of the early church that we saw resulting in people being added daily, those being saved. So what comes first? 
Well, we know it's His love. You don't have to muster it up today because His love is here. We're in the temple. This is supernatural. You might feel like you're on a natural chair sitting next to a natural person, but this is natural. This is supernatural, sorry. Why don't you stand to your feet for a moment? I'm gonna pray. Oh, God, the church that we desire, the effect, the church that we desire is a result of us devoting ourselves to spiritual community. But actually, the thing that drives our devotion is God's love poured out through His Holy Spirit. Come on where you are, why don't you just shut your eyes for a moment. If you feel comfortable, why don't you just lift up your hands? I wanna pray as we gather today to start the week together, I wanna pray for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. We're gonna say sorry for the times where we've neglected to devote ourselves to the people of God, to the community, to the temple, to the table. I'm gonna pray for a fresh filling and an outpouring. So Lord God, I pray right now for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit for every person here for every team member, for every member of the congregation. We pray right now from their head to their toe, a fresh filling of Your Holy Spirit. We thank You for the promise that says that the Holy Spirit pours out love into us. Lord God, we desire to be the church that You have designed us to be. We're sorry for times where we have not devoted to spiritual community, to the temple, to the table. And I pray right now, Lord God, that through Your love, we would devote. Pray right now, through Your love, all fear would be gone. God, we thank you for this supernatural moment in your presence. Would you help us, Holy Spirit, to devote to spiritual community that draws and releases your supernatural power in our church, in our families, and in our city. In Jesus' name. Amen.